Hey everybody, welcome to the Labor Day edition of the YS Podcast. My name is Adam McLean, and uh, I don't know about you, I hope that you are just lounging today. You're totally resting and enjoying the Labor Day goodness. Uh, we're going to get you off to Les Christie right now. He's going to teach you a skill. Uh, I know you guys like to play games with your youth group, or maybe you're learning how to like to play games, and uh, today we're going to talk about dividing. Now for some games you play, you'll want to divide the kids up into groups. To do this, let me give you some do's and some don'ts. First of all, some don'ts. Do not have the kids number off. It works great with children, not with middle schoolers or high schoolers. Because when you, middle, when you start numbering them off, what they'll do is they'll figure out, oh, you're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then know you're going to get all the 1s together, all the 2s together, and all the 3s, and all the 4s together. So what they'll do is count off and have their friends get ahead of them or behind them so they're all together as a group. One, the purpose of dividing kids into teams is so they'll meet some new people. Second, do not appoint two team captains and have kids start choosing members of the group to be on their teams. That's always the worst way to, to select a, a team because some kid is going to be chosen last and they feel terrible and they don't want to play and it's just a downer for the whole day. Let me give you some better ways to divide students up. First of all, you can do it by their birthdays. Have all the January, February, March birthdays get in one corner, April, May, June, the next corner. Have all the four, so you have four triads all around the room, then they're in, in groups. Another way to do it is by those that are born on that are even in age or that are odd in age. So all the ones and the, oh, I guess you wouldn't do ones because that would be really tiny. But all the 13-year-olds and 15-year-olds and 17-year-olds get together and all the 14 and 16-year-olds would get together. So you have them by their ages as odd and even. Also another way is when they come in the room, you would throw jawbreakers in their mouth. Just give them, each of them a jawbreaker, different colored you know, candy, hard candy. They're sucking on the candy as they're going through your meeting. When it's time to divide them into small groups, have them just stick out their tongues. Get all the red tongues over there, all the blue tongues over here, all the green tongues over here, and all the yellow tongues over here. You got them divided into groups. My favorite way, though, that I just discovered a couple of years ago is toilet paper. No, 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 no. It's not, does the toilet paper come over the roll or does it come under the roll? In all the surveys I've ever done, two-thirds of people have it so it comes over the roll. So it wouldn't evenly divide the group up. But if you want to divide a group pretty evenly, almost every group I've ever done this to, is, is how students either fold their paper or do they scrunch their toilet paper. Some of you are thinking right now, there's another way to do it. <laughs> yes, there is. Some people fold it. Yes, they do. Some of you that are scrunches are thinking, why would someone take the time to fold that? Well, they do. So, but when you discover it, is that about half the students fold, half the students scrunch, you get them in two halves, they're giggling and laughing when you, they're getting divided up, and then they're ready to play the game, and they're in a great mood, and it's a lot of fun. Hey everybody, uh, I was supposed to interview Mark Malak, but he thinks he can catch a plane, so this is how we do it here at YS. Look at him, leave me alone! Look at that! Oh, leave me alone! my beautiful Planet Wisdom t-shirts? You can have one too. Ooh. Go to planetwisdom.com. Is that your car, Mark? No. It's a rental! Um, just missed him. But I did get a chance to catch up with Megan Hutchinson and she has this to share with you at this busy time of year. Hi, my name is Megan. And my husband, Adam, and I are parents of two young boys who are the ages of two and five, which means our life is totally chaotic and crazy and fun and psycho all at once. Uh, and on top of that, my husband works full time and I work part time as a youth pastor, you know, part time. And so life, life is very full and, and very, very crazy. And so as a result, we have found that we have to be what we call radically intentional about pushing the pause button on our life and taking care of ourselves. And so one of the, probably the three areas that we kind of tend to or try to pay attention to more and more and more, especially as our lives get crazier and crazier with our kids growing up and the jobs that we hold, are the area of play and exercise and time alone. And those three areas are, again, those are the areas that we feel like we need to be radically intentional about 
caring for and um, preserving. So anyway, a few days ago I woke up kind of in a bad mood. I'm sure that doesn't ever happen to any of you, but it did to me and my husband just said, hey hon, I think you just need to take some time alone and, and exercise. It's been a few, been a while since you have and I said, gosh thanks, I need to go do that. So I did. I spent some time alone and I went to the gym and exercised and I came back so refreshed, so renewed, so like ready to love on my kids in a new way and my husband and re even reach out to teenagers in a new and refreshing way. And I know that sounds crazy because it was just a couple hours I was gone, but I felt so much better. And then that day our whole family, our, you know, my husband and our two boys, we went out and we went surfing all day long and just played. I made sand castles. I got sand all over me. I was a mess and lots of laughter, lots of chaos and just a lot of play. And that was just a few days ago and I came back from that time with my family and, and then my time being alone, playing and exercising and kind of refreshing my own soul, time with the Lord alone. And I was a new person. I really was a new person. And I am reminded in this field, this crazy, awesome field called youth ministry, that we need to take time to nurture ourselves. And for me, that's, that means exercise, it means being intentional about play and pushing the pause button and just spending time alone with, with the Lord. Journaling, reading, contemplating, meditating. And when we do that, something happens inside of us that draws people to us, that makes us kind of more magnetic to the world around us. It says there's something different about her or, or him. And I'm reminded that in the Bible, Jesus took his disciples often to a place called Caesarea Philippi. And I've been there, I've had the privilege of going to Israel a few years ago and it's this beautiful place where there's streams and fountains and beautiful rocks and grass it's just gorgeous and I knew then why God placed such Jesus placed such a big premium on the Sabbath on rest on taking time away because you go to a place like Caesarea Philippi which is my beach or maybe it's your mountains and you get renewed and so if you haven't done that for a while, if you haven't exercised or played or even, even invited some of the chaos that comes with that, if you've got small young kids in your own home, if you haven't taken time alone, I just encourage you to push the pause button, relax, play, renew. Because to the extent that we do that to ourselves and then to our family, we're able to do that with teenagers. Thanks for doing what you do. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this week. I hope you got something out of it. I hope you, you picked up a tip or you got encouraged, uh, but we'll catch you next week. Um, as always, I want to invite you to connect with me. You can send me an email at adam at youthspecialties.com. Look me up on Facebook or on MySpace or on Twitter or whatever else that you use that you want to connect with me. You can even call us. It's a new thing we have called the telephone. But uh, we'll catch you next week and enjoy your Labor Day. Doesn't look about done. Woo! <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.